This is Simplify MBS ETF, ticker symbol MTBA. In this video, we'll discuss what are mortgage-backed securities, the benefits of owning mortgage-backed securities, why newer mortgage-backed securities are better, how MTBA is managed, why consider investing in MTBA, and finally, portfolio use cases. But first, what are mortgage-backed securities? It all began during the Great Depression when the government created the Federal Housing Administration to help stabilize the housing market. Along the way, they chartered the Government National Mortgage Association, or Ginnie Mae, the Federal National Mortgage Association, or Fannie Mae, and the Federal Home Loan Mortgage Corporation, or Freddie Mac. In 1970, Ginnie Mae started bundling thousands of similar loans together into tradable securities, thus giving birth to the mortgage-backed security as we know it today. Here are the key characteristics of mortgage-backed securities. They are bundled packages of residential mortgages. Each bond is comprised of thousands of mortgages made to prime borrowers, which are borrowers with FICO scores above 720. It's the second largest sector of the bond market after treasuries. Perhaps most importantly, interest and principal payments are effectively guaranteed by the full faith and credit of the U.S. government. Aside from nearly zero credit risk, a big benefit of owning mortgage-backed securities is its yield advantage over treasuries. This chart shows yields on the mortgage-backed securities index in copper versus 10-year treasury yields in gray going back a dozen years. You can see that mortgage-backed securities consistently have a higher yield than comparable treasuries. That's because, unlike a treasury, a mortgage can be prepaid at any time for any reason without penalty. When investors buy a mortgage-backed security, they don't know if that bond will pay off in two years or 30 years. It's all at the discretion of the borrower. Because of this prepayment uncertainty, mortgage-backed securities carry a higher yield than treasuries. Over the past two years, the mortgage-backed securities yield spread, as shown on the copper line, has grown dramatically wider from less than 50 basis points at the beginning of 2021 to over 178 basis points as of September 2023. When mortgage rates are very low, like they were in 2021, prepayment risk is also lower, as there's not that much incentive to refinance a mortgage that's already under 3%. However, as mortgage rates have dramatically increased over the past couple of years, it introduces the possibility, if not probability, of prepayments increasing in the future. This added uncertainty around prepayment risk has resulted in growing yield spreads over treasuries, making mortgage-backed securities even more attractive than usual. Contrast this to the gray line, which represents investment-grade credit spreads. Even as a growing chorus of economists is forecasting increased risks of a recession, investment-grade corporate bond spreads have barely budged. This makes mortgage-backed securities not only more attractive versus treasuries, but versus corporate bonds as well. While mortgage-backed securities are more attractive than they were a couple of years ago, it's the newer mortgage bonds that are especially attractive. This table shows the coupons and yield to maturity of various mortgage-backed securities. Unlike treasuries, where two bonds of the same maturity will have similar yields regardless of their coupon, there is a dramatic difference in yields between mortgage bonds of varying coupons. Compare a 2% coupon bond with a newer 6% coupon bond. The 6% coupon bond has an 88 basis point yield to maturity advantage over the 2% bond. Most investors own mortgage-backed securities through index funds. The majority, over 72% of the 30-year mortgages in the index are comprised of older, lower coupon bonds. That's why investors are better off avoiding mortgage index funds and buying newer mortgage-backed securities instead. Here are some of the key characteristics of newer mortgage-backed securities versus older ones. The Fannie Mae 6% bond has a 6% coupon, effective duration of 4.65 years, a distribution yield of 6.17%, 
and a yield to maturity of 6.47%. The older Fannie Mae 3% coupon bond, which is a reasonable proxy for the mortgage-backed securities index, has a 3% coupon, effective duration of 8.07 years, distribution rate of 3.74%, and a yield to maturity of 5.67%. The newer bond advantage is clear. Let's talk about how MTBA works. The fund buys newer mortgage-backed securities, currently the Fannie Mae 6% coupon bonds. This exposure is obtained via TBAs, which are mortgage-backed security forward contracts. The TBA contracts are rolled and distributions are paid monthly. So what exactly is a TBA? It stands for To Be Announced. It represents a contract to buy a mortgage-backed security on a specific date. It's functionally similar to buying futures contracts. 90% of the mortgage-backed securities trading volume takes place via TBAs, so this is the most common way to gain exposure. It facilitates both liquidity and operational efficiency for mortgage-backed securities investors. Lastly, it has a simpler tax treatment than owning mortgage-backed securities directly. Why consider investing in MTBA? First, the bond market itself is much more attractive than it was a couple of years ago, as interest rates have dramatically increased across the board. And remember that when it comes to bonds, the yield at the time of purchase is a good indicator of expected future returns. Next, mortgage-backed securities have a higher yield than comparable treasuries, but this yield spread has widened dramatically over the past year, making them historically attractive versus treasuries. Lastly, MTBA focuses on newer mortgage-backed securities, which have a significant yield advantage over older mortgage bonds found in mortgage-backed index funds. Let's discuss some MTBA use cases. The most obvious use case is for investors that own mortgage-backed security index funds to simply swap their positions one for one for MTBA. Another use case is to modify an existing aggregate bond position. Many investors have fixed income exposure that closely resembles the Bloomberg Aggregate Bond Index. This index has about 42% in treasuries, 29% in mortgage-backed securities, 25% in corporate bonds, and 4% in other types of bonds. An investor could replace their aggregate bond fund with a three-fund mix of about 45% in a treasury fund, 30% into MTBA, and 25% in an investment-grade corporate fund. This would give them a similar exposure to the aggregate bond index, but with a higher distribution yield and yield to maturity. The last use case is simply for any investors looking for the most attractive yields they can get without taking on any credit risk. Now for some Q&A. Why does MTBA invest in Fannie Mae bonds and not other mortgage-backed securities such as Ginnie Mae's or Freddie Mac's? All of these mortgage bonds are functionally similar, but Fannie Mae's have the most liquidity, making them the best choice. Why use TBAs as the underlying instrument instead of just buying the Fannie Mae bonds directly? TBAs are functionally equivalent, but with greater liquidity. They're also easier to manage and have fewer tax complications, making them the better choice. If Fannie Mae 6% bonds are better than lower coupon mortgage-backed securities, why not buy even higher yielding bonds like the Fannie Mae 7% coupons? MTBA might consider other mortgage-backed securities in the future, but for now, Fannie Mae 6% bonds are in a sweet spot delivering attractive yield with some room for capital appreciation if rates decline. The shorter duration Fannie Mae 7% bonds would not allow much room for appreciation. Thanks for watching this video. For more information on Simplify ETFs, please go to simplify.us slash ETFs. Email us at info at simplify.us or call us at 646-585 0476. You can also book a meeting with us directly. From our homepage, just click the Contact Us button on the main menu. We look forward to speaking with you.